What is going on, everyone? Back again with another episode of the 415ers podcast. Evan Giddings, Mark Grandy coming at you three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday on the Odyssey Podcast Network, anywhere you download your podcast from in cooperation with 95.7 The Game. And Mark, I am pretty pumped for this episode here today because we got a lot to talk about with the San Francisco 49ers, namely the quarterbacks, namely the head coach, and even despite coming off a loss that or a win, I should say, that gets you back to 500, you're now one and one heading into week three, a Sunday night till with the Denver Broncos. There's a little sort of eerie feeling in the air in Santa Clara as well as around the 415 because of what's going on with Kyle Shanahan and his quarterbacks. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a really strange situation because you mentioned kind of a slip of the tongue. You say coming off of a loss, it almost feels that way. I mean, the team absolutely dominated the Seahawks. They they won by 20 points, one of the largest margins of victories that the Niners have ever had in this series, going back to into the 80s. Um, but no one is talking about actually really what happened on the field uh, in, in terms of the final score because of what happened late in that first quarter when Trey Lance went down with an injury. He had successful surgery uh, on Monday. Uh, he'll likely, it, it seems very likely, miss the whole season, although there are some reports coming out that suggest maybe he'll be fully healed in 11 to 12 weeks. But uh, obviously, you have no clue how this injury is, is going to, to react and recover and how the rehab process is going to go. But yes, they're coming off of a win. Uh, you know, you're, you're one and one. You have a huge game coming up against Denver, and, and we'll talk more about that in a future episode. Uh, but no one's talking about the win just because this quarterback situation is so unheard of. I mean, it was unheard of a couple of weeks ago before the season started, and now that you have a season-ending injury, it just takes another strange turn, uh, and it's you know quickly becoming the most unique quarterback team situation perhaps in NFL history. It's It's strange. Yeah, apologies there. A bit of a Freudian slip, I guess you could say, on the <laughs> loss for San Francisco because they lose their QB1 in Trey Lance. And yet, as you so aptly put in our first pod on that dropped on Monday, the Super Bowl odds actually got better for the 49ers, yeah. which is something that is absolutely unbelievable. And that's, that's pretty much where I want to start, which is first, are the San Francisco 49ers now closer to... We'll begin first with the postseason because... It seemed like when Jimmy Garoppolo came into the game, obviously was not intending to in the first quarter, 233 left. Trey Lance goes up the gut on a second and eight, gets rolled up on, breaks his ankle. As you mentioned, he got his surgery on Monday. All signs appear, at least according to Kyle Shanahan, he said he would assume that Trey Lance will be ready by the beginning of 2023, if not sooner. Various reports out there that we don't want to pontificate on, but... As far as the 49ers' chances to make the postseason, in a weird way, I didn't feel necessarily confident with Trey Lance as the quarterback, of course, having seen one and not even a quarter games in for the 49ers. I didn't feel supremely confident that they would make the playoffs. But now with Jimmy Garoppolo back under center, I almost feel like you can pencil in 10 wins and put him in the first round. I don't know about you, Mark, but that's the way I feel. I, I think it, it does kind of feel that way. I, I'm with you. This team is probably closer to the playoffs than if Trey Lance was the starter for, for the whole season, or even if he just wasn't hurt at this point and the rest of the season was at worst a question for him. Um, I'm not so sure about maybe what that means for the postseason because I think there's a very realistic chance that if Trey Lance was playing a whole season – you know, he, he played 17 games in a regular season. I think it's very likely you would have seen some pretty steady growth from him in his first season, his first full season as a player in the NFL. And then who knows what that quarterback might look like when the postseason comes around. There's a chance that he just picks things up and, you know, he's one of the top 10 quarterbacks in the league once the postseason rolls around. I'm not saying that that's what I was expecting, but it's a possibility with Jimmy. You have a proven guy who you know his limitations. You kind of know what to expect, which is why I agree that the postseason is likely because if Jimmy Garoppolo stays healthy, you know, the past 
tells you that this is probably a team that's going to win more than half of their games. And in the NFC right now, uh, that likely suggests you're going to make the postseason. Uh, again, I'm not sure what that means for the playoffs and if they can win road playoff games like they did last year. But I, I would agree that with this injury, as strange as it is to say, with the backup quarterback now playing, this team is more likely to make the postseason. And I think the team probably agrees. I mean, Sunday evening, there was a report from Mike Silver of the San Francisco Chronicle saying that there are whispers around the team, whether it was the front office, the players, anyone saying this sucks for Trey, but but the team is probably better and more equipped to win now with the injury because Jimmy Garoppolo is a more proven commodity, which is absolutely nuts to say. Yeah, and that's why I was walking around uh, Battery Street down here in downtown San Francisco, bumped into a uh, San Francisco 49ers fan who was actually at the game on Sunday. And he said when Jimmy Garoppolo came into the game, despite, you know, obviously everyone feeling sort of, th feeling these complicated emotions because Trey was getting carted off. He's in the air cast. This 22-year-old you feel so sorry for has a season most likely cut short. And... But Jimmy G comes into the game and he said it was it was like someone just put like a warm blanket over you kind of like I, I don't want to call it a heavy blanket because to me, Mark, I don't know about you, but that is that is my A plus of blankets. It was more like like an Udi, like, you know, kind of like a robe, like something you can put on and take off. But it, like an Udi blanket, that's basically what Jimmy Garoppolo is for the 49ers because he masks so many of the, you know, early season immediate deficiencies in the offense that we saw from Trey Lance. But of course, the projection of where Trey Lance was going to be after game 17 is why I think, and I'm with you, why the playoffs, once you get there, are more of a question mark than they were before. And so that's why I absolutely believe, and you know, if you want to battle back, feel free, but I feel like right now where the San Francisco 49ers are at, they are closer to making the playoffs but they are further from achieving the ultimate goal, which is to win a Super Bowl. Because if you take a look at Jimmy Garoppolo's playoff resume, he has not yet been able to go head-to-head -head with a quarterback that you can definitively say he was better than in a game. The Niners have gotten to the Super Bowl. They have gotten to the conference championship. They have been the better team in individual games than their opponents. But Jimmy Garoppolo himself has not been a better quarterback than... I mean, you, if you lay out the 4-2 and two record that he has, you can make the argument that he has not been the best quarterback in any of those games. And so to me, if you're Kyle Shanahan, this is probably the reason why they went out and spent all the draft capital to get, to get Trey Lance. You are going out to get a quarterback that can at one point when your defense maybe doesn't have a good game, maybe you get a pump block, you miss a kick, you need your quarterback to be better than the guy on the other sideline. And right now they don't have that guy who is supposed to be Trey Lance. And so I feel like they are closer to the playoffs and yet they are further from the Super Bowl. So generally you're saying they have uh, like a, a safer win total, like the, the odds of them reaching 10 wins is higher, but the, the, the variance isn't there. This isn't going to be an elite elite team because you're kind of capped by what your quarterback can do. But at the same time, the floor is is relatively high considering the talent around him and the fact that he is a guy that is at least going to manage the game and, and keep you in most games. That's how I feel is the ceiling of Garoppolo. I think most people would tell you is like he can get you to the playoffs. He can obviously win you games. But when it comes down to a fourth quarter where you need a score, where you need to get yards, you need to get the win, he in all likelihood, is not going to be that guy. Now, we don't know if Trey Lance is, but with his you know, projected skill set, by the end of this season, he was supposed to at least be, be in a place where you could see, okay, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Maybe it's not this year. Maybe it's not next year. But down the line, this could be a guy that could, you know, with some playoff experience under him, be able to one day, you know, Pencil or not pencil in, but but project him to be a Super Bowl caliber winning quarterback because 
based on what we've seen so far, Jimmy Garoppolo can get you to, you know, the, the precipice, right? But you can't, he can't get you over the top. That's what a lot of people have made Jimmy Garoppolo out to be. And so with the win now team in the Niners with a, a top five defense with what was supposed to be a great running game before Elijah Mitchell went down, which, which is supposed to still be, you know, a, a solid running game under Kyle Shanahan. I, I felt like the variable of Trey Lance is the floor could be six wins maybe this year. It also could have been 12, but I feel very safe saying that San Francisco 49ers now will be in the playoff mix because of how weak the NFC is, as well as what I know Jimmy Garoppolo can do. I know his limitations, but I also know how far he can take them. I would say, I think, I think the one thing I would fire back on is while I, I, I do follow the logic. I mean, this is still a quarterback and, you know, you know, I think I got to preface all of this by saying I'm, I'm not the, the biggest Jimmy Garoppolo fan. He's, he's a solid NFL quarterback. He's, he's never been, and he'll never be a top 10 quarterback in the league. He's probably right around middle of the pack, 13, 14, 15th best quarterback, maybe a, a little better than that on, on his best days, but he's not pushing top 10. And, you know, maybe for those five games in 2017, you could make a case. But for what we've seen from him the last handful of years, I don't think you can make that case. But with all that said, I think you still have to realize this is a guy that was one play away from winning the Super Bowl against perhaps the greatest quarterback of this generation or of the next generation, the next 10 years in Patrick Mahomes. And he was a dropped interception by Jaquaski Tardaway for making another Super Bowl just last year. Um, you could also say he didn't play particularly well in those games. And I think that's part of the reason why you're saying the Super Bowl odds probably less likely um, with, with well, this and, injury. And all, he was also the same quarterback that was a block punt touchdown away from losing at Green Bay. He was also 17 points away from losing losing in the season finale to the Los Angeles Rams. Yeah, very good points, which is what which is what makes this Jimmy Garoppolo conversation so strange because you you say one bad thing about Jimmy Garoppolo and all the Garoppolo fans will come out and say, "Well, he's won 70% of the games he's ever started. Obviously, he's a winner." And clearly there's something to that. It's hard to exactly quantify what it is. Because when you're watching him play games, most of the times you're not really all that impressed. I mean, he makes some good throws. He did on Sunday against Seattle. A couple of really nice throws to the sideline. Some nice timing routes. He hit Brandon Ayuk down the field on the sideline, which is something we rarely see perfectly in the breadbasket. Ayuk happened to drop it. You know, you look just in the box score and you're going to count that against Garoppolo as an incompletion, but it was a perfect throw. But still, the eye test does not favor Jimmy Garoppolo, but the results do, which is what makes this Jimmy Garoppolo experience so strange and at times so confusing and infuriating for 49ers fans because you would you you, you think to yourself, if this guy was just a little bit better you could win 80% of your games with him. You could win a Super Bowl. You could potentially have won two Super Bowls already. But he's clearly better better than replacement level, and he's better than the third overall pick from the 2021 NFL Draft at this moment. The team certainly feels that way. Uh, I think most people feel that way. Uh, the team absolutely loves him, which is obvious. Uh, the team is clearly broken up about Trey Lance's injury, but they are ecstatic that Jimmy Garoppolo is their quarterback again. Uh, it's, it's a strange experience, and that's what these last few years have been with Jimmy Garoppolo. It's been strange, but it's been effective, and it's nearly worked to the tune of almost two Super Bowls. It has ultimately resulted in none, uh, and now we're right back again with another season as, as him as the starter, and I wouldn't be shocked if he gets another couple of postseason wins under his belt, because that's just what this guy does, despite the fact that he never really looks all that impressive.